And as the Indigenous Voice Referendum Working Group holds a meeting in Parliament House today, two women from the Northern Territory have made a pretty timely entry to the building at the invitation of Yes Vote campaigners. May May Morrison is from the Australian Workers' Union based in Darwin and Barb Shaws from the Central Land Council in Alice Springs. They're here to talk to politicians who haven't quite made up their mind on the referendum yet, and they've been speaking to the ABC's Dan Borsha here in the Senate Courtyard. Bob, May May, thanks very much for joining me. Welcome. Thank you. You're here bending the ear of politicians that haven't made up their mind yet about the voice. Have you, have you gone? Have you had any wins? Yes, I think we have. Um, yesterday we started. Uh, we spoke to three politicians who really wanted to know about the voice, uh, voice to parliament, and um, the conversations, they were conversations we had yesterday. I think it went really fantastically in regards to, they more or less wanted to know about the messaging, what kind of messages they could give out, and also how to approach the people, you know, in the communities about a voice to parliament. Yeah, it's gone pretty good. Uh, Bob, you're both signatories of the Uluru Statement from the heart. One of the questions that keeps being asked is, what will the voice actually do? How do you answer that? I would find the voice would be like an advocacy group for us and making sure that we have um, <clears throat> involvement with drafting legislation, especially when it affects Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. And it's part of all that decision making and um, autonomy, I guess. Mm. Mame, why is that important? Why is it important? Because, you know, it's been a long time coming. I mean, you know, years gone by, we, there was never a voice for our people, like on the ground, in the communities. And um, it's about time that being recognised in the constitution, which will have a voice to parliament and shrine there. We need our own people on the ground that'll be chosen to represent us, to make decisions for us on a self-determination basis and just to reflect that we are, you know, we are human beings and it will happen. You know, we need to have our voice there. When you talk about this being a long time coming, what does it feel like for you to have not had a voice? Well, it's been very frustrating. It's been hurting, um, you know, especially with things that have been happening for a while in the last 15 years. I mean, it's, it's always been negative stories coming out about, um, I always refer to our mob, Torres Strait Island Aboriginal people. Um, and. You know, it's about time where, with this government that's in now, the Labor government, they've realised, the Prime Minister's really realised that, you know, we should be recognised and we should have our voice. And, um, and it's about time it happens. I mean, to have a... to get recognised to, uh, in the Constitution and to have a voice in Parliament, I... in my heart, I feel it will happen. I mean, this process needs to happen now. And if it doesn't happen now, well, we just got to keep trying. Mm. Uh, Bob, having a voice is one thing, but it doesn't mean much if there's no listening happening, does it? Mm. Unfortunately, over the last 15 years of somebody living under the Northern Territory Emergency Response slash intervention plus stronger futures, what we've always wanted was the government to listen to how the way Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders are feeling and where we want to go with our lives and actually run our communities and our organisations the way we want and not be subjected to um, federal policies, federal government policies as well as territory and state policies as well. So we actually want to you know, have our seat at the table to have a voice to make sure we are voicing our concerns when it comes to legislation that both Canberra and the Territory, state and Territory governments actually drafting, you know, so we want to be at the table to help influence government change and that's where the listening 
need to happen. You're acutely aware of, of this. You, you live in a town camp in, in Alice Springs. You're a youth worker. You're involved uh, with so many of the big conversations that have been happening nationally. Linda Burney, the Minister for Indigenous Australians, said that she didn't think that the situation that we're seeing in Alice Springs would have happened if there was a voice. What do you say to that? I believe if there was a voice prior 2007, we wouldn't have had an intervention, we wouldn't have had stronger futures, and we wouldn't have been having the issues that, that's happening currently in Alice Springs. It's not only an Alice Springs issue, it's a Tennant Creek issue, it's a Catherine issue, it's a Darwin issue. But it's not helping anybody right across Australia either because it's the same thing that's happening everywhere else in other states and territories, in their towns, in their backyards. Mm. Alice Springs is only just a small town of Australia. So what we need to do is have that voice that'll help our people in the bush, in our remote and rural areas, and then let's start fixing up our towns. But at the moment, our focus is getting the voice up and talking to politicians that are very undecided and want to know more and that's a constructive conversations that we're having and, and it's helpful for them to understand where we're coming from as First Nations people of Australia, both Aboriginal and Torres Strait. I just want to stick with Alice Springs for just a moment and you, and you said those, those solutions that that you're after, we, we know that there has been the legislation passed around alcohol bans, that there seems to have been a vacuum of policy in both the Territory and Federal Government after the Stronger Futures uh, laws ended in the middle of last year. What, what is the, the solution here and where do alcohol bans fit as part of that? I've lived under the intervention for 15 years because of the alcohol bans that they've had on us living on prescribed areas. Now, that was only one aspect of the legislation. Our alcohol management plans was the first one, and it went through three government departments before it got stacked on a shelf. Unfortunately, they just ignored us. So if we had a voice, we'd be able to work with those alcohol management plans, and we would be able to use those temp alcohol management plans as AMP, as a template for other town camps in other state and ter you know, in other areas of the territory, as well as remote communities. And we know how much money that has been wasted over the last 15 years, over $700 billion spent on trying to save us from, um, <clears throat> or, or try, and try to help us, I guess. So when you look at the whole structure of the Northern Territory and what we're going through, people are gonna lead to drinking. But what is also gonna be happening is that black market is gonna increase like it did over the last 15 years. It's so unfair because those people are going to go to jail for selling grog to somebody like me, who is a carer, who, who works, who pays the taxes, who contributes to society, like a lot of us that live in the Northern Territory. It's, it's so complex and I'm yeah. grateful to hear your, your perspectives on it. Uh, May May, back on The Voice, there are some in Australia who say we just need more detail. What do you say to that? Okay, so to that, well, the question's there. We have a working party, as we speak, that are um, looking at and processing principles, guiding principles, to uh, lead to the voice in Parliament. I say there are, there are details out there, and there will be more. So once, you know, we know the question's there, we've got this working party happening, and there are principles there, so I think if people need to know more, they should listen or ask questions if they're not quite sure of what the details are. So I would like to ask, you know, the whole of Australia to walk beside us while we're campaigning for the referendum and also not forgetting our young people, our youths, our emerging leaders, they need to walk in front of us so they're aware of what's happening. Education starts in the home. That's where you can have your conversation around all that. You know, only need one person to start a conversation and then spread the word. But that's all we need. We ask Australia to walk beside us. 
Um, and please, if you don't know, just ask questions. There's people around that knows answers or that can guide you to different areas, but yeah, walk with us. And when the day comes, please vote yes. Oh, Maymay Morris and Bob Shaw, thank you both so much for your time. <laughs> thank You're you. welcome.